crazy one. And I and I want you to and it's this is just a conspiracy theory. There is no I have no weight in this. I'm not saying this is going to happen or I think this should happen. But hear me out. The Minnesota Timberwolves just traded and mortgaged their franchise for Rudy Gobert. They sent five first round picks, multiple role players. They're all in. And they're relying on the Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns duo to work, right? The only possible solution to remedy that situation if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, if this doesn't work, is you have to trade Carl Anthony Towns. What is going on? I want to welcome you from FCOR for today, Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. I'm your host, Sean Murphy, alongside my guy, Jeff. Hi, Freddy. Jeff, how's it going, man? Happy post 4th of July. Long weekend. We are yeah. back. It's good to see you, my man. It's good to see you too, man. I mean, we got summer league approaching for the Pistons at least. And I'm excited. Ooh, so a, lot of, a lot of fun things cooking down the pipeline. So we're kind of recapping free agency a little bit now at this point in time. But overall, it's been a great offseason. Um, and I'm excited. As a Pistons fan, I think everybody should be thrilled for the season, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, yesterday or the other day, if you if you didn't catch it on Woodward Sports, we broke down the, the offseason moves that Troy Weaver has made. And Jeff, now that the offseason – is kind of come and gone as far as the main stages of free agency. A lot of those big names, a lot of the big fish have kind of been taken. And what have we learned about what Troy Weaver's plan is going into this season? One word I would use to describe it is, is well, it's really two, honestly. I got I to give two. It's patience and it's flexibility. And for a guy who wants to create a, a team and fill it with their own homegrown talent, I think that's the right way to approach it. Like he did with OKC yeah. um, or like Sam Presti did with OKC, but he learned from Sam Presti. So I think that's the way he's going to do this. And I think it's the right way, especially for a market like Detroit. That's the number one thing, because this isn't LA, this isn't New York. You can't get free agents just because of the city, you know, your name it's Detroit. And lately there, we haven't been winning basketball games. So you have to prove you have talent and what they're doing is they have Cade already you have Sadiq Bay. But now adding Jay Nivey, that's another piece of this puzzle that I think will ultimately pay off in the long run. Because if you want to go out and attract free agents or you want to trade for a free agent, now you have, number one, the cap space um, next year because you'll be able to you know, opt out of all these guys. But you have the players. That, that, that's number one. Like it is a player's, you know, it's a player's first league and, and guys have decisions. And that's why Katie is mentioning the Suns and, and among other teams, the Miami Heat. So you have to you have to build a, a good roster. I think Troy's doing that so far. Fill it with young talent, like the Memphis Grizzlies did, uh, Grizzlies did when they drafted John Morant. You saw what it did for their team, and I think that's something Cade and Jay Nivey and company can have with the Pistons. So I would use flexibility and patience. He's doing it the, yeah. uh, the right way, and I think you know a lot of people were expecting him, especially this free agency, go out and get a Miles Bridges or DeAndre Ayton. But he's like, hold up, I think there's a another way to approach this. Get Jay Nivey, Jalen Duran, and just play the long game. So I respect it, and, but those are the two words I would use to describe it. Yeah, without a doubt. And and especially I, I think one thing that you really notice is that every guy that Troy Weaver's brought in this offseason and every guy that he's brought in throughout the course of his regime has been guys that he doesn't really question their character. The only right. one that like maybe you could make that accusation would be Marvin Bagley, but even then it's been nothing but glowing reviews from both sides ever since Marvin Bagley's come to Detroit. I mean, with Miles Bridges, we don't even need to get into all the stuff that he's going to be dealing with off the court. Right. With with DeAndre Ayton, there were all the reports and everything about him behind the scenes, him not working with my, uh, with uh, uh, with Monty Williams in the system that they had in Phoenix. It makes you wonder what possibly transpired there. So with Troy Weaver going and getting guys like Erlen Noel and Alec Burks from New York, perhaps a trade that he didn't expect to be able to be there, but you know, with New York so desperately trying to dump salary to make the deal that they made to get Jalen Brunson, perhaps the Pistons, you make the argument, they went and accomplished everything they wanted in free agency through that trade. Right. And I think one thing that deserves to be pointed out is when he had the press the presser right after drafting Jay Nivey, he brought up his character, number one. That's what he looks for, Jalen Duran. These guys' his character. Because that's that's what always you know, you know, the famous quote by Dwayne Casey, we want guys that can make the bed, you know, make their bed at night or in the morning. And, and that and, and people laugh at that, but that's true. Like the guys they have on the roster right now, you can 
no question about the character, their love for the game. And I think that's the right way to go about it. You don't have to jump the gun and go sign whoever. They understand that you have homegrown talent. You have guys that could potentially be superstars in Cade, Jaden Ivey, and maybe even Sadiq Bey. So he doesn't have to sit there and say, uh, you know, the pressure's on me to build a winner. He understands, listen, we have a process. And, and he always says it's boring to say that, but it's the truth. They have a process, and they're just going through it. And, and you're yep. seeing now in three years, look at the roster turnaround. Like you're seeing the process pay off. So whatever he's doing, Troy, keep doing it. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think another lesson and something that we learned this off season as well is that not only do you need to build an attractive roster to attract the top free agents, you need to build an attractive roster to attract the veterans and the role players as well. Because if you look at where Bryn Forbes went, if you look at where Thaddeus Young went, if you look at where Otto Porter Jr. went, where a lot of these guys ultimately went in free agency, they went to situations where they felt like they could at least get into the playoffs and play meaningful basketball. And right. that's going to be the thing. I mean, obviously, Detroit, they were able to get Alec Burks in. And with that, that addresses shooting. He's a guy who can come in and play wing minutes with Bryn Forbes. He's hard, so maybe kind of wonder where he would fit into the rotation. You know, obviously, I brought up guys like uh, Daniel Gallinari. At one point, I brought up Dante DiVincenzo, but they went to the to the Celtics and to the Warriors, respectively. Gee, I wonder why. But, you know, it's one of those things where it really shows because everyone's like, oh, well, we have Kate Cunningham. Well, guys, 29 other teams in the NBA have a guy that they, that they would say, well, we have this piece. Wouldn't someone want to play around this? And that's the ultimate thing is that you really do have to build it. And they will. And ultimately at that point, they will be attracted to come through free agency or through trade later on as we're right. building this farm system, building these assets. That's the thing. That's a big thing. I think we really need to focus on as Pistons fans. Yeah, not trying to overjump the rebuild. And I think, you know, it's a, I would call it a retool. I mean, if you want yeah. to get the correct term on it, we're retooling. But restoring. People, it, it, restoring, great word for it. And, and I think people, when they first look at this for agency, you see all the money available. You see the Pistons being the number one team with the most cap space. People get excited. And I'm never going to fault a fan for being excited for free agency and wanting to be better, quicker, faster. But you have to understand that there's always a process. And I hate taking that word because it's Philly just, you know, and they still got Joel and Beats, so it ended up right. working out. But there is a process, especially with a team like Detroit. Like, look at PJ Tucker, Bobby Portis, and Serge Ibaka. Like, PJ Tucker signed with the 76ers. I mean, let's be honest. It, it was it was a disaster over there last year, and he still went and signed with the team. That that shows you one thing that I, PJ Tucker, feel like I can contend with the 76ers. It has nothing to do with James Harden. Um, now with, with Joel Embiid, you have a, a team ready to compete. So that, like to your point, Sean, it's, it's spot on. It's why Bobby Portis, yes, he got paid, but he re-signed with the Bucs. It's Serge Ibaka, re-signed with the Bucs. Like, this is a common theme. So to your point, regardless if it's a top free agent, a mid-level free agent, whatever it is, a veteran, you got to have a respectable team, man. You got to have guys that want to come here. And I think right now you're starting to see that because next offseason when he has the money, I think that'll be proven. Yeah, without a doubt. And with that, Jeff, let's talk a little bit about over the course of the next season. Now that we know what Troy Weaver has done now, let's talk about perhaps where he could go next. There's two obvious guys that, that come to mind as far as uh, not, not necessarily trade fodder, but, but guys that very well could be in trade packages. And those are Kelly Olenek and Corey Joseph, I think. You know, Corey Joseph, he picked up his player option. Obviously, now it'll be an expiring contract. Kelly Olenek, a guy who could put, perhaps go and play for a contending team, a big who can shoot the who can shoot the three, spread the four, play play the four and the five. What do you think about possible moves and directions Troy Weaver could go? I mean, I think shooting is always the number one thing right now they need to address. I mean, they have some shooting, but I think for this roster to reach where you want it to ultimately be, you need spacing for guys like Jaden and Cade. So Right now, they, they got Alec Burks. You have Kelly Olynyk. You have some spacing. You have guys, Sadiq Bey, of course, but just in terms of, you know, surrounding them. Um, that's kind of the route I see them going, whether it's, you know, going out and, and trading for guys before the deadline or next offseason addressing it. I get Kevin Knox. I love the signing, but let's be honest, he's not a knockdown shooter. He shoots 34% as a career. So that's that's okay, but you can get better. I think there's room to improve. But overall, Sean, I think for these guys to, to, to reach their maximum potential – to have shooting around these two elite playmakers offensively, that's where they need to go. It's just, is get depth and shooting. So, so what you're saying is, 
So what you're saying is, is we're going to be trading for Donovan Mitchell by the trade deadline once he's done in Utah. There we go. Kevin Durant. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Durant, Donovan Mitchell, you know, you name it. Uh, but in all seriousness, Jeff, are there any stars or are there any players throughout the league that like as the Pistons are building this up and as we are, you know, getting this franchise to where we are, are there any names or are there any guys that you're looking at throughout the league that potentially you could see fitting on this roster? I have one. I'm curious to hear yours. I, I want to be honest with you. I don't really have a specific guy. I know there's a lot of fits. Like people before the draft always brought up Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, um, et cetera, et cetera. But they're all guards. Like now I feel like Jaden could take that spot. So for fits around them, give me a wing. Give me another wing who can knock down shots. I don't care who it is. I'm fine with that. That's fair. I like that. My guy, my guy came on my radar actually over the pa- or past five days. And it's a crazy one. And I, and I want you to, and it's, this is just a conspiracy theory. There is no, I have no weight in this. I'm not saying this is going to happen or I think this should happen, but hear me out. The Minnesota Timberwolves just traded and mortgaged their franchise for Rudy Gobert. They sent five first round picks, multiple role players. They're all in. And they're relying on the Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns duo to work, right? The only possible solution to remedy that situation, if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, if this doesn't work, is you have to trade Carl Anthony Towns. And when I'm looking in a system, if you can somehow, as the Detroit Pistons, keep Jalen Duran. You have Cade Cunningham. If you can keep Jaden Ivey, I I know you'd have to give up somebody in that trade. Yeah. But am I crazy for liking the prospect of a Cade Carl Anthony Towns pick and roll combination? Because, Because offensively, tell me that isn't enticing. And then I would argue that Duran is ultimately going to be a better offensive player than Rudy Gobert because Rudy Gobert is a fucking liability on the offensive end. I mean, sorry, he is. I would argue yeah. that Duran right now, I, I would argue I, I like a lot of the tangibilities and things that he brings to the offensive end, and I would argue it would be less of a liability in that way than Rudy Gobert. And I would say that potentially a Cade, Duran, uh, a, a, a front court involving Duran and Carl Anthony Towns could be crazy. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying these are the types of scenarios that, you know, we could, like, you you have to look around the league now over the next couple of years and look at what's happening. That's all I'm saying. Hey, hey we're, it's fishing season. Like, this is what, yeah. as Pistons fans, you got to go out and fish. You got to see who's available. And I think if Carl Anthony Towns is available, I like it. I mean, the best big man in terms of shooting in the league, I'll take that. It answers my spacing question. And you get a, a for sure product. It really depends. I'm curious to see him at the four this year. I know he gets a lot of flack for being soft, but I really want to see him at the four next to Rudy Gobert. If it works, I could see even him and Jalen Duran working next to each other, to be honest right. with you. So but I like it. Out. I like it. But hear me out. You give up. Because let's be honest, if you're going to go get Carl Anthony Towns, you got to give up some. You got to give up Sadiq, right? Yeah, like that's probably. that's going to be, that's probably going to be the piece. But, but uh, all I'm saying, Sadiq, Killian, Three first, a pick swap. Okay, you it, it, you're talking to the team also who just got Rudy Gobert for all of those assets. What do you think they would put the price tag on 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 Cat for? Listen, who's just, who's listen gotta be a top I, 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 I'm just saying at the time they might. I, I'm playing a scenario where they're not going to have a ton of leverage at this point okay. because that's right. that's all that's right. going to be the thing. The only way this happens is if the Timberwolves thing falls apart. So I'm just saying this isn't a scenario where this Timberwolves thing doesn't go well. And I don't think it's going to go well because I really don't like the move for the Timberwolves at all. But, yeah. you know, it's it's just one of those things where, again, you have to look, you know, you have to look at disgruntled stars because guys on contracts, like with, with NBA free agency, what we're learning, in my opinion, is free agency is more than being a free agent. It's also being on a contract. <laughs> so... That that's yeah. the thing. We're seeing guys with four years left saying, I want out, and this is where I want to go. So 
I'm just saying the Pistons, it could be players in these conversations over the next couple of years. And I really believe we're going to get somebody in the next few years. But Jeff, I think what we learned over this off season is that Troy Weaver is not going to pull the trigger until it's the right time yep. until Build. it's the right person. He's building it the right way, and that, that's the right way to go about it. That's why we mentioned all these teams being attractive destinations because of the talent they have and, and the amount of games they win. So hopefully the business can progress, but they're on their way. No doubt about it, man. They got yeah. the right guy in charge. For sure. Now, the question is, what do you think of what Troy Weaver is building? Do you think my Carl Anthony Towns take is crazy? It's something I just came up with on the spot, and I really liked it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. But with that, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to... To join and become a From Half Court member by clicking that join, that join button down below. But also, be sure to follow my guy, my guy Jeff Ifrady on Twitter, as well as myself at Sean Half Court. But that is going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys next time from Half Court. Be sure to subscribe.